This one right here is one of the best RTX 5070 Ti out there in the market, and it's from ASUS. And I'm not talking about absolute being the best, but also relative performance to the price. And if you've been following the channel for a while, this should actually be no surprise to you, because while the ASUS ROG Strix and ASUS Astral series are pretty much overpriced, so while they are very good products, they are generally very overpriced, the TUF series actually delivers a pretty good value for money in general. But I do think that with this TUF RTX 5070 Ti, they really have surpassed themselves. Why is that? Well, first of all, check out the packaging. So your box has an actual premium box inside of it, and inside it, you will then find a pretty cool GPU stand, like we saw in the ROG Strix card, an extension cable, some stickers, and of course, the manual. The unboxing feeling overall is very premium. The card itself also has a lot of peeling off to do, which a lot of you may think it is an unnecessary thing, but if you're buying an expensive piece of hardware, I mean, this thing is closer to the 1000 bucks price point than it is to the 500, it's around 750 bucks, uh, on average 700, 750 bucks. It's nice to feel like you spent your money on something that's actually premium, it's not bad, but something else which is also gonna make you feel like it's premium, and it's also gonna be why it's premium, is just the weight of this card. Now, I do not have a scale, but Trust me, this thing is heavy, and it is not only heavy, it is also thick, which is very good for cooling, because it's so heavy, because it's all fins for the heatsink. But this also makes it a lot better to fill up a large computer case, because on average, I find on the RTX 5000, on 5070s especially, they are all so thin, which can be good, okay, if you have little space, but generally, you're lacking space. Um, more like in length than you do in height, to be honest, in modern PCs. But hey, I can see the benefits of it, but a heavy card on a large case is gonna look so much better. And this is something that the competition from lower-end brands like Palette Gain World in 3D is not doing. They're all making thin cards to save costs on the actual heatsink. Couple that with a very, very solid external plate on the card, some good-looking fans, and from an aesthetic point of view, this card, in white especially, is the best you can buy. Now, this also means that performance-wise, this card is insane. Now, as usual, you should never buy a card just because of an OC or overclocked label, because you can watch one of my tutorials, spend five minutes on your card, and get more performance either way. Also, the differences in binning aren't as massive unless you're buying something really high-end, so I wouldn't buy a card just because it's overclocked. However, if you buy a card that cools better, that's a lot different, because the actual curve and how much the boost clock is sustained is directly controlled by how well the card is cooled. And this is a card that runs really well. I will show you the benchmarks on the screen. First of all, it delivers a great fire strike performance at stock, but also check out the temperature at stock. Very, very good. And in gaming, things are pretty much the same, even with ray tracing and frame generation enabled. Those things also make this one of the best overclockers out there just because of the sheer cooling capacity. And this is basically what the ASUS TUF series is for me in 2025. Basically, it is same cooling as ROG, just with a different design and without the ROG logo, which is gonna make it cost at least 200 bucks more. It is very, very feature-packed. Let's start from the actual I.O. So it's a dual-slot card, not triple-slot. This is very important because in this way you can mount it on some cases which only support for dual-slot cards, not necessarily SFF cases, but for example, a height Y60 requires this, so this is good. Other than the usual HDMI plus 3 display port, this thing has an extra HDMI, making it five display outputs with two HDMI and three display ports, all of the latest generation. This is great, but more important to me, since I love to overclock BIOS mod and do stuff on my cards, is the simple BIOS switch button. From performance to quiet BIOS, this is gonna slightly change how the card behaves, but more importantly, if you do brick one of the biases, you can just revert back to the other one. So to recap, this thing is not as expensive. Right now it costs just as much as other unbranded RTX 5070 Ti's. It has some very good cooling, it is a bit thicker, so make sure there is space in your case, but on the other hand, if you do have a very big case, this is the best card you can buy. It looks very good, it is feature-packed, and it is basically the best card you can buy if you find it for the right price. The right price being maybe a small premium 50 bucks over competitors and quite a lot lower than a ROG Strix card. If you can find it at that price, definitely, definitely buy it. And now with that said, the video is over, so if you want to support the channel, drop a like and subscribe, but also please 
If you have this card or another tough card, drop a comment down below. Tell me if you like it, if you dislike it, how your experience was with it, and if you would recommend it to other people. So we can turn this video into a little bit of a community to help each other with what to buy. With that said, see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.